with fluid level instrument. Bottom of pressure is equal to the surface pressure plus the gas column pressure plus the pressure due to these liquids down here, whatever they are. The weight of the gas column can be approximated by taking one fourth of the casing pressure divided by 100 and the gas column length divided by 100. So if you had a casing pressure of 100 pounds, you divide that by 100, that'd make that number one. And if you had a length, a gas column length of 8,000 feet, that would make this number 80. So four divided into 80, the, bottom, the gas column pressure is about 20 pounds. You can figure it in your head. <coughs> Fluid level instruments have been around a long time. A fellow in the 30s out in California named C.P. Walker did some absolutely brilliant work back then and we're, we're you know, just in the last few years, we've still been verifying what he did a long time ago and trying to fine tune it. But he did an awful good, good job. And what he patented was shooting the fluid level in a well. And he hooked a gun up here and generated a pulse with either anything to create a pulse. You know, you could release some more gas into the well. You could shoot a blank shell off. Ga hydrocarbon gas will not explode unless you put oxygen with it. So as long as you have a sealed system up here and the pressure is greater than atmospheric pressure, it can explode. So you can shoot a shell in there and it's no problem. That pulse goes down the well, reflects back off of any change in area. If it sees a tubing collar, if it sees a casing leak, if it sees a liner, tubing anchor, any of this stuff we've looked at down hole, it'll, it'll show up on your chart on the reflection. You know, you might, you might put it on a chart or you might digitize it. But here's the, what we normally think of. You have a gun up here and lately, because they're so cheap to operate, you have a gas gun, you put a little bit of gas in it, CO2, very safe gas, and release it into the well. That pulse travels down the well, and every time it goes past any change in area, it reflects back to the surface. And so if you have a little anomaly down here, paraffin or a liner or a hole in the casing, any sort of anomaly, it'll send back some signal. And over here, when you record it on the instrument, just bango, there's a collar, there's another collar, there's a collar, there's a collar. The older instruments, well, there was a good instrument named the Sonolog that was dual channel like this. The Sonolog, and they, they came out in like the 40s, late 40s or 50s. Um, they would record the sharp collars on one side and then they had an amplifier in there that amplified the type of signal that comes back from the liquid level. Your cheaper instruments like the echo meter, we just recorded this one side and if the fluid level comes along you'll see it as long as you can see a little bitty collar. But then when the collars died out, we just flip it down. That way we got by with just one, recording one channel. And you're cheap. When you buy a TV set, you buy it with one channel up there. You don't buy 40 or 50 channels. You can switch around from one to another, but you just switch to the one you want to watch. Today, the modern, 